Dinner or this? I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation, do you realize now what you've done? We know year by year what's going to happen, and they know we know. It's only you that they tell these fables and you buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction? That is the problem. But they pretend like nothing's going on. Uh, I don't even know how to get through to you people anymore. Now, not only is this not talked about on the news, uh, Vladimir Putin gave a speech at an economic uh, summit 2016 this year, and many journalists were there, but nobody, not anybody in America, spoke on what he what he said. I just want to show you that. They have a lot of things on it with uh, that guy. What's that Edomite guy with the raspy voice? He sounds like he swallowed rocks. I want to just show you what's going on in the world. He's a white guy, conspiracy nut. Alex, Jones. Alex, Alex, Jones. Alex Jones, that guy. I don't. You gotta. I, I always gotta cross reference when he speaks, cause he always goes off the deep end. So after I saw his video, I cross referenced the actual video with Putin, and he he did have it on point what he said. But usually I don't listen to Alexander. What's his name? Alex Jones. Alex Jones, that guy. So this is at the Saint Petersburg International Economic Forum this year. It was around. Uh, happened in July, June or July. Well, I'll, I'll fill you in what he's talking about. He's talking, he says, world, we are on the brink of World War III. He says, many of you journalists are forbidden to uh, write or explain what I'm saying to you. He said, but America has done things to incite World War III. When you watch the video from the beginning, go a little before this, a little before this. Right there. Start right there. Just listen. Uh, all right, he says, always saying we must protect ourselves from the Iranian nuclear threat. That's what America says. Where's the threat? There is no Iranian nuclear threat. We even have an agreement with them and the U.S. was the instigator of this agreement where we helped. We supported it. But if not for the U.S., then this agreement would not exist. Which, which I consider Obama's achievement. I agree with the agreement because it is eased tensions in the area. So President Obama can put this in his list of achievements. So the Iranian threat does not exist. But missile defense systems are continuing to be positioned. That means we were right when we said that they are lying to us. Uh, uh, still nah, their reasons were not genuine in reference to the Iranian nuclear threat. 
Ну так оно и есть на самом деле. Once раз again, they lied to us. Сейчас построили эту систему. So they built this system and now they are being loaded with missiles. You as journalists should know that these missiles are put into capsules, which are utilized from sea-based mid-range Tomahawk rocket launches. These are being loaded with anti-missiles that can penetrate distances of up to 500 kilometers. But we know that the technologies advance. We even know in which year the Americans will accomplish a new missile, which will be able to penetrate distances of up to a thousand kilometers and then even further. And from that moment on, they will be able, we know year by year what's going to happen and they know that we know. It's only, those are all journalists there. It's only you that they tell lies to. Your people, in turn, do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. Remember, this is two months ago. Or a month ago. How can you not understand that the world is being pulled into an irreversible direction? That's the problem. Meanwhile, they pretend that nothing's going on. I don't know how to get through to you anymore. And they justify this as a defense system, not weaponry, that is used for the purposes of an offense systems that prevent aggression. This is absolutely not true. A missile defense system is one element of the whole system of offensive military potential. It works as part of a whole that includes offensive missile launches. One complex block, the other launches a high-precision weapon, the third blocks a potential nuclear strike, and the fourth sends out its own nuclear weapon in response. This is how it works in current non-nuclear but high-precision missile defense system. Well, okay, let's put aside the actual missile defense issue. But those capsules into which anti-missiles are inserted, as I've mentioned, they are sea-based. On warships which can carry the Tomahawk subsonic cruise missile system, one could deploy it to position in a matter of hours, and then what kind of anti-missile system is that? How do we know what kind of missile is in there? All you have to do is change the program, non-nuclear to nuclear. That's all it would take. This would happen very quickly, and even the Romanian government itself won't know what's going on. Do you think they let the Romanians call any shots? Nobody is going to know what is being done, not the Romanians, and the Polish won't either. Do you think I'm not familiar with their strategies? Ha! From what I can see, we are, we are in grave danger. We had conversation once with our American partners where they said they'd like to develop ballistic missiles but without a nuclear warhead. Pause right there. So now here's a scenario. America has their ships around Romania, around Poland, and they said, oh, these are non-nuclear. And we're just going to do tests. He says you can change the programming easy from non-nuclear to nuclear. So, for example, let's say you got y'all got a gun. I got a gun, and I'm going to shoot. And I say, but mine is no, no, uh, blanks. And you got a gun. How do you know I'm telling you the truth or not? What would you do? What would you do if I'm going to shoot my blank allegedly? What would you do? You would shoot. This is what he's saying. He said, they're going to shoot these non, say they're non-nuclear. How do we know that? So, go ahead. Right, you're initiating a war. That's what he's saying. But as far as I am aware, they did not go through with developing these weapons. They have paused for now. They didn't pause. But the other one, they continue to implement. I don't know how this all going to end. What I do know is that we will need to defend ourselves. And I even know how they will package this Russian aggression again. 
Well, yeah, what he's going into, remember the things with Julian San, I'm not saying his name right, Assange, Assange and what's the other, Michael Snowden? Mm -hmm. These are some of the things, and remember one of them is over in Russia. What's his name? Michael Snowden, right? Yeah, right, right. And they were sharing a lot of the stuff, right. and it, a lot of that information, this we're all based on. So this ain't whistling Dixie. When he says Russian aggression, he said they will come up with this Russian aggression again. In other words, they're going to use the media to point the finger and say they're the bad guys. They did that during the Reagan right, administration. Right, exactly. Exactly. And Kennedy. I was wondering, just off a note, I was wondering about this man named Hans Blix. How many of y'all remember that name? Hans Blix. But that was during the thing with Iraq, right? The, the missile inspection. And he walked, he was one of the UN weapons inspectors that said, I'm, there ain't no weapons over there. And he got mad and left. Y'all don't remember that? Okay, so I was, I was, I wanted to find out what was he? What he was he Russian or whatever he was? But Hans Blix. You could Google it. Go ahead, read on. But this is simply our response to your actions. Is it not obvious that I must guarantee the safety of our people? And not only that, but we must attempt to retain the necessary strategic balance of power, which is the point that I began with. Let me return to it in order to finish my response. It was precisely this balance of power that guaranteed the safety of humanity from major global conflict over the past 70 years. It was a blessing rooted in a mutual threat, but this mutual threat is what guaranteed mutual peace on a global scale. How they could so easily tear it down, I simply don't know. Okay, that was it. That was it. Give me Daniel chapter 2 now. Daniel chapter 2. It's going to tie into what we just witnessed here and what we read about Black Lives Matter. Y'all know this one. Many of you know it. We've read, we've got videos on it, so I'll just get to the point. This is the, the dream that the king had in Babylon. He saw a great statue which had a head of gold, arms of silver, uh, um, what was it? Brass chest, the legs, legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay. Let me look at it again. Let me get the elements. Yeah, put the element, put the picture up there of the statue. Right, the image head was of fine gold. His breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Can we put the uh, illustration up? And I'm just going to get to the point about the last kingdom which we are living in now. I need everybody to understand. We've been watching the news with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, but meanwhile. Putin is saying World War III is about to pop off, and every and the Americans don't, didn't hear nothing this guy said. They're looking at Hillary, Hillary Rotten Clinton, yeah. and Donald Trump, the grump. So, but meanwhile, this guy is saying, listen, they practice it. I'm going to shoot my missiles over there and blow everybody up. So we got to come out of La La Land. A lot, bet, look at uh, foreign news opposed to American. American news is censored. That's why they say Americans are the dumbest people on the planet, because we get censored news. Right. Give me that, Daniel 2 and 41. The American entertainment system is like a lullaby that put people to sleep yes. to the real facts that's going on overseas. That's the point. Exactly. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 41. Start at 40. 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. The fourth kingdom is talking about Rome. Bad. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. Let me say this. Rome and America, because America is an extension of ancient Rome. I word it like that. And as we read down, you're going to see why I said that. Go ahead. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. Now the feet and toes, if you look, t people have two feet, right? Ten, in total of ten toes. America and the European Union has something called the Ten Common Markets, or often called the e European Union, okay, which consists of ten major countries. That's what it's talking about, the toes. Go ahead. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall it be in it of the strength of the iron. Meaning their military is the strength of the iron. Go ahead. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, uh -huh. and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong 
and partly broken. So this last kingdom is not as strong as ancient Rome was. It has the strength of the iron, which is the military, but then there's miry clay, and he's going to explain what the miry clay is, got it? And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's America, the great melting pot. They have mingled themselves with the seed of man. All races are here. This is the prophecy. Watch this. But they shall not cleave one to another. All your marching and your voting to try to get nations to join together in the bond of brotherhood in America, the Bible says, but they shall not cleave one to another. Read. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. There's nothing that can stop what's going to happen. Nations, Christ even said in Matthew 24, nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The prophecy is this last kingdom, it says they're not going to cleave one to another. It's not going to be like Rome was. Ro Rome had every nation in subjection. This last kingdom here in America, it says they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So you have the military force, but you still have the, the miry clay, with, which is the other nations. All nations are here. Read on. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's what's happening now. The Lord is setting up a kingdom. Israel is returning to their true nationality. That's what that's talking about. Go ahead. Which shall never be destroyed. This teaching, this truth is not going to be destroyed. Okay? I want you brothers and sisters to understand nothing can stop this. No matter if they kill X amount of us, whatever, nothing's going to stop this. It's Christ called this the mustard seed. Starts off the smallest, but in the end, it's the greatest. That's the truth. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So your white friend Becky ain't going to be living in it, talking about in rulership. Becky ain't ruling. Miss Laura ain't ruling. Hassan ain't ruling. All your friends from these other nations, the Bible says, the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Now you hear it? Oh, he's a racist. I'm telling you what the Bible says. That's right. Many of us, I'm pretty sure some of y'all are here, no people in the world of other nations who seem cool to you. Oh, but what about my friend? No. Right. He or she can't come. They're not going to rule. That's what the Bible says. Bishop, can we add something there? Because you said that the American media has rocked these people to sleep. Because you people are exactly that. You're fast asleep. And I want to show you something. We don't have to play the video. Just bring the a picture up, up of him from the clip. I'm going to show you all something heavy. Um, like the bishop said, you are in a time known as the end of the world. You're in the last days. You're in the end of the world. And the reason why it, it, it appears that a lot of you are asleep is because some of the way you're living your lives, the way you're talking, your interests, and you're not realizing that that conversation that that man had is explaining to you, he sees the seriousness that we are ignoring. He sees that his kingdom and his rulership is about to fall because from that nuclear war, we rise. Okay? Put, put, just leave it right there. Y'all look at that man. Does this look like a man that you'll fear in the streets if you see him on the streets in New York? No. You see his face. He looked like a simp, like he crossed the street. We walking on the same block as me. Now go to Google and Google Putin motorcycle gang. This guy don't walk the streets like how Obama walked the streets. You got to see how he walks the streets of Russia. He is a thug. This man is no joke. Bring those pictures up. He walked with all the thugs in Russia. Arm. They all got guns, machine guns. He walks anywhere he wants in Russia. It's not like Obama where he got to get the uh, CIA and he got to get helicopters flying over him to take his daughter to school. Go through, bring some more pictures up. Bring some more pictures up. I want to show you how this guy walks. This is a thug. Okay? That's one of the highest crime bosses in Russia right there. And that's his best friend. Go through more pictures of it. I want you to see how this guy is. Okay? They throw parties in the street, block parties. The president, the leader of that place is there. You see Putin with his motorcycle clothes on. That's him in the middle right there. Arm, machine guns. All of his people walk. They're not police. They're not a part of his secret service. These are the thugs in the street that he walks with. That is not no sucker that he got around him. Okay? The Most High said that he set these kings up for a reason. 
That's how he rides around where he is. You'll never see the president doing nothing like that. He ain't afraid of nobody. And he's not afraid to set it off. And he's letting y'all know that the fear that I see, you Americans are lost. You don't know what your country is doing. Okay? They're causing it. And he's letting y'all know that when it comes time to set it off, he is going to set it off. You, he's explaining to you what the missiles could do. And you people are clueless to what the missiles could do. Your mind is not even on it. He's explaining to you in detail what the missiles could do. Could you type in on, on YouTube, effects of a nuclear bomb? This is a very, very short video, but this is what's going to happen to y'all up in here. This is what's going to happen to you. It's a very short video, but he explains in detail how when the first bomb hits, the damage that it's going to do today. This is not an old video explaining what it's going to do. He's explaining on a low-level nuclear attack what's going to do, how many people are going to die. That's it right there. It's a very short video. It's only four minutes. But I just want you to listen to it so you can understand why he was speaking so intensely at that meeting. Within a thousandth of a second of the detonation of this bomb, a fireball would form, reaching out for two miles in every direction. Four pause, miles pause, across. Pause, 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 pause. A thousandth of a second. You can't count you a, cut a, second, a second. You cut a second up in a thousand pieces. Because some of you are thinking you're going to run, you're going to go here, America's going to have a place for you to they said that the, the, wave, the wave will go oh, through oh. miles within a thousandth yes. of a some second. Some of you believe you're going to get on a plane and flee somewhere. He's making it clear to you in this video, ain't no place for you to run. There's no way for you to hide. That's why the Bible documents we must be delivered by the chariots. Let it play. Within this area, temperatures would rise to 20 million degrees Fahrenheit which is hotter than the surface of the sun, and everything would be vaporized. The buildings, the people, the trees, the upper level of the earth itself. To a distance of four miles in every direction, the blast would generate winds in excess of 600 miles per hour, and blast pressures greater than 25 pounds per square inch. Forces of this magnitude can destroy anything that human beings can build. Underground shelters would collapse, to a distance of six miles in every direction. The heat would be so intense that automobile sheet metal would melt. To a distance of 10 miles in every direction, the blast would still generate winds in excess of 200 miles per hour and blast pressures greater than 10 pounds per square inch. Forces of this magnitude would level wood frame buildings, masonry buildings. A modern steel and concrete building would see its walls and floors swept out just the steel skeleton would remain. To a distance of 16 miles in every direction, the heat would be so intense that everything flammable would burn. Wood, paper, cloth, heating oil, gasoline, it would all ignite. Hundreds of thousands of fires, which would, over the next half hour, coalesce into a giant firestorm, 32 miles across, covering over 800 square miles. Within this entire area, the temperature would rise to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. All the oxygen would be consumed, and every living thing would die. Beyond this great firestorm, the destruction would continue, and there would be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, suffering severe injuries. Crush injuries, penetrating injuries, extensive burns, blindness from retinal burning. All of these people would need intensive medical care but it would not be available because most of the hospitals would be destroyed, most of the doctors and nurses and other health professionals would be dead, there'd be no electricity to run the ventilators and cardiac monitors, most of the medical supplies would be exhausted within hours, and the vast majority of these people would not receive any medical care at all. They would die alone and in great pain. And if this attack were part of a large-scale war between the United States and Russia, this level of destruction would be visited on every metropolitan area in the United States and in Russia. A study which Physicians for Social Responsibility published in 2003 showed that if just 300 of the warheads in the Russian arsenal detonated over urban targets in the United States, something between 75 and 100 million people would die in the first half hour. He said in the first half hour, how much, what was the number he said? 35 to 100 million will die upon impact. 
those were not the numbers they were given before. And this is just in guesstimate. Okay, this was three years ago. Okay? And don't think that, because those pictures that you saw up there, that was from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And Naga, that's that a ain't mark. talking about nothing like the power that they're talking about now. So they cannot put pictures up to demonstrate what kind of effects this will do. The most I got the pictures in here, in the Bible. He tells you there ain't going to be one blade of grass left here when those bombs hit it. That's what God said. In addition, the entire economic infrastructure would be destroyed. The transportation system, the communications network, the public health system, all the things that a modern industrial country requires to maintain its population, all of these things would be gone. And it is probable that in the ensuing months, the vast majority of the American and Russian population, those who were not killed outright in the first half hour of the attack, they too would die from starvation, from exposure, from epidemic disease, from radiation poisoning. As unimaginable as these direct consequences are, they are not the worst part of the story. Here too it is the environmental consequences that we need to really look at. Second Peter. So that's what I was saying that many times we spend our time watching American news and it's censored. And they keep uh, uh, the American citizens in a state of stupor. That's why video games is on the rise. Oh, I got the latest video game. Meanwhile, Esau is plotting to destroy things. But the black and Latin man is clueless as to what world events is taking place. Come on. Second Peter's 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Meaning you're not going to know when it's going to happen. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's what we just saw in the video, right? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. This is thermal nuke. This is the New Testament talking about thermonuclear destruction, right? The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everything in it is going to be burnt up, right? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What man of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? This is why we're very strict on keeping the commandments, okay? Knowing that these are going to happen, it says, What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness? That means God's laws. This is why we don't have time when the, the murmuring with some people, oh, the gossip, the hatred, the slander. We don't have time for it. Things is too short, you know? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of, of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt. And with the heavens is talking about is the kingdom. It's not talking about the sky on fire. It's talking about the ruling kingdoms on earth being on fire. Go ahead. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Wait a minute. I'm going to see what's thinking. Where did we just read that? We, which are alive, will look for new heavens and a new earth. What is that talking about? One hand, two hands. A young man with the glasses. New heaven, new earth. What is that talking about? Does that go, Shalom leadership, does shalom. that go into uh, Second Ezra 6 and 9? Yes, it does. Exactly. Very good. All 100%. praise. 100%. That's exactly what it's talking about. Give me First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 1. I thought y'all was going to miss that one. That's what it's talking about. When it says a new heaven, a new earth, it's talking about Jacob ruling. And Bishop, it. You, like you said, we just read it. it. It was saying it in Daniel. Right. Okay? That this, there's nothing you can do to stop what we're bringing forth now. The Most High is not going to let them get the upper hand and then stop us from speaking. This is it. Exactly. There's nothing else after this. This is it. You're in, you're experiencing the end of the world. Yep, exactly, 100%. Read on. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 9. 1. Verse 1. Chapter 5 and verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no heed that I write unto you. You have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So all of us in here, everyone listening should know that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Meaning you're not going to know what is going to happen. So prepare yourselves. Go ahead. 
But when they shall say peace and safety. When they say peace and safety, oh, everything's good in the world. Right. Go ahead. Politics, all that crap that y'all watching on TV. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. So he gave us a clue. He said when they say peace and safety, meaning when everything looks good in the world, that's when it's going to happen. Go ahead. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They shall not escape. It uh, should come like a, uh, the, what does it say about the woman in travail? Read that part. As tra for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Meaning, meaning a woman has what's called contractions, okay? She's having contractions before the birth of the baby. There may be, just before the baby comes, there may be a moment of seeming like, oh, I'm, I'm okay. Then that last contraction, boom, it's when that baby's coming. That's what the Apostle Paul is revealing to us. It's going to be like that with world events. It's going to be like a woman in travail. Something's going to happen here, happen there, happen here, happen there. Then it's going to calm down a little bit. Then boom, that's it. Like we're seeing now, Bishop. Right. Every single day you turn on your TV, you see something happen in some country, some shooting, some bombing, some killing, some assassination. Y'all just click right by it and just go to check the score of the sports. Right. right. Y'all don't care. Or what Hillary is talking about. Or what Hillary's talking about. Or who you you still trying to decide you're going to vote, who you're going to vote for. To hell with them. Okay, what he's explaining to you is they're going to rock you to sleep and then the destruction is going to come. That's what that stuff is for, to put you to sleep. Yep. And a lot of you love being in sleep. That's why the scriptures say it's high time for you to wake up. Exactly. Right. Read the, on. Right. Verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. So those of you learning this Bible, you're not in darkness. Go ahead. That that day should overtake you as a thief. So the day shouldn't overtake us. We should be well aware of what's transpiring in the world. And when we should know that when they say peace and safety, everything is good. We know it ain't. Go ahead. Ye are all the children of light uh -huh. and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. That's what Deacon Asaph was saying. Let us not sleep. Don't let them rock you to sleep with your dumb video games, with your dumb cartoons and movies. You fall in as a Pokemon. Ah! No, they didn't play Pokemon. What's that? Uh, That's it. That stupid video game. People no, are what are these older guys be playing on them? Bishop, Bishop, Call, Call of Duty, Madden. NBA 2K, that's what I'm talking about. That's what they playing. Uh -uh. Instead of reading. Uh -uh. I'm sorry. I got Captain Hat and I. Could you help us out? Negroes are playing Pokemon. Will you tell them? Yeah. Oh, there's a new game called. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a new thing called Pokemon Go. <laughs> Follow the treasure. We're going to find the treasure. That's what I say. Americans sit are the stupidest people on earth. That's what the other nations say about people here in America. And they look at the blacks. Look at blacks and Latinos. You don't get no dumber than them. We don't. Therefore... Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. Give me Luke 21, 29. Luke chapter 21 and verse 29. And he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. When they, know, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So when you look at the fig tree, Christ is saying you can tell when summer's at hand. Look at the fig trees. Go ahead. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. So this fig tree is actually a, a parable of Israel rising. Go ahead. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Now that's heavy right there. That wicked generation that lived during the time of Christ is back today. That's why, remember, they all died. That whole generation's come and gone. That's letting you know that in this, they all coming back before these la in these last days. Go ahead. Ain't nobody got away with it. Go ahead. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Come on. And take heed yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Can we look? What does that word surfeiting mean? Surfeiting. What is that? And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. I don't know what that means. I'm black, damn it. I don't use that word. Okay, an overabundant supply. Uh, disgust caused by excess. Okay, so now read that again. 
And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Which is excess. And drunkenness. And drunkenness. All going into partying. Go and ahead. cares of this life. Ooh, and cares of this life. Go ahead. And so that day come upon you unawares. So you so caught up in your own little world. The day of the Lord shall come upon you unawares. Go ahead. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now verse 36 is heaven. Can you read that again? Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be... When it says watch ye therefore, it's talking about study. Study the scriptures. Go ahead. And, and pray. And ahead. pray always. That ye may be accounted worthy. Now that's heavy. That ye may be accounted worthy. This is why we stress God's commandments to every man and every woman. That's what's going to count us worthy in Christ. It's Yes, Christ died for us, but we're showing to the Lord that we are sincere in our walk, in our talk. This is why we don't really have time to tolerate, oh, I, I, I committed adultery. Well, go drop dead. Get the hell out of here then. Get out. Oh, I, 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 I got my... No, I'm going to say that. Somebody will edit me saying it. Um, oh, she talked about me. She was gossiping. I ain't got time for that foolishness. We want to be accounted worthy. You are not accounted worthy. Always, every week, the same brother, same sister in their sin. Yep. They got to get out. Right. Enough. They never take the truth seriously. And some of y'all know who you are. Some of y'all been with us a while. There's no growth in your spiritual, yes. spiritual, give me a word. Your spirit as yet. There's no growth. You're that, the same person have, you was they, five years ago. They have not evolved. Okay? When you see them coming for the same matter over and over, they're not thinking about the end of the world. They're exactly. not thinking about nuclear fire and destruction. They're thinking about their own selfish pleasure, and that Satan will use them to disrupt. Right. So we got to be accounted worthy. Worthy. I don't know about y'all. I'm trying to make your calling and election sure. Give a give a Ace up the other mic. Yeah, Ace. I realize I said this to the bishop the other day, and I said it to the other men. When certain situations keep reoccurring, they distract us from bigger matters. So I told him we must lessen our involvement with the personal lives of the people in the congregation. Some people who can't write get right. They need to get the hell out. If the name keeps coming up over and over and over, don't ask them why no more. The word devil means deceiver. And a lot of people come with deception. And before you know it, these same people who you're trying to help got you entangled in some madness. That's why Christ kept to himself. He kept his circle small. Okay? When they tried to involve him in certain matters, he was very careful on how he spoke to the people and he limited the way he interacted with them because he saw the bigger picture. He had to come here and die to deliver the people because he saw what we don't see now, the end of the world. He needed to come die and then come back and deliver us. And that's how we got to be as we've been in this truth. It's time for, we're looking on deliverance. We're looking on salvation. We want to get out of here. We're seeing the end of the world. And you are still playing with your penis. You're still on sites looking for, for, for things that are of no profit. You're still arguing. You're still bickering. You're still arguing in your marriage. You're still going over all these foolishness. You're still cheap. You still don't want to help. Okay? You need to go. You need to get the hell out. Could we just show you pictures of this world being destroyed? The presidents, the highest levels of leadership on the earth is having dialogue about the destruction, the end of the world, which is for you. And we still got to deal with all this foolishness. You're a waste of time. That's how your mind's supposed to be. Hey, Deacon Ace, I don't think they picked up on what you just said. You just made the point, like we read early in Ezra's, for the world was made for our sakes. That includes that nuclear weapon. I want to go up and kiss that thing, because I know when that thing is shot, that's, that's going to be our kingdom. Okay? I said, this right here is the weapon that's going to bring us in here. Hey, did y'all see uh, what we just showed with the sister that was saying, burn this SH down and all that? Did y'all see, we showed the clip at the beginning of the clip, they were saying the Lord's Prayer. Y'all saw that? Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand what the Lord's Prayer At is. All. When you say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, that means for the Lord's kingdom to come, somebody's kingdom got to be destroyed. He's not sharing authority with America or Russia. 
So if you want the Lord's kingdom to come, and that Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, Christ is saying, you want the nations destroyed. Give me that Daniel 7 and 9. This is the Lord's prayer when he says, thy kingdom come. There Daniel you go. 7 and 9. Oh, you're beautiful. Th th that's what it's saying. See, this was, this, was the, this was the B side of the prayer. Okay. Now you have the record. P flip it over. Play yeah. the B side. <laughs> Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Meaning I beheld, I saw the kingdoms of the earth destroyed. That's what Daniel is saying. I looked and saw the kingdoms of the earth destroyed. On Go ahead. Fire, blown up. And the ancient of days did sit. And the Lord did sit. And if he ain't sat, he has a body. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. If he has on a white garment, you need a body to put on that white glorious garment. And it's not a Greek toga sheet like they show you in the Jehovah Witness comic books. He had a bad garment that probably changed every few seconds. He ain't sitting in the same garment for too long. <laughs> the Lord is bad. And when he sit on the throne, he you know, you know Jake, we sit with style. He's not like this. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. The Lord don't sit like that. You see black people in the car? You know the gangster link? Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, of about. Of course, I know. The Lord is cool on the throne. He ain't just in get Come on, Martha. See, no. right. We got to go to the room to change garments. He can just sit there and like, woof. Garments, <laughs> woof. Woof. <laughs> changing. Was that it? Did you finish that? No, there's more. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Meaning God's a black man. That's what that means. That's right. Don't be ashamed of it, and I ain't apologizing for it either. So, that thing right there, give me that one of Wisdom of Solomon uh, 18 and 7. Thank you. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, verse 7. This what? is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Here it is right here. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 and verse 7. So, of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies. So you really got to understand what you're saying in that Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You want salvation and you want the destruction of these nations. That's what it says. It says, so of thy people was accepted. That's what I want to do You got some Ringo. Israelites who don't Thank accept you. that. Man, they say, no, no. That other nations got to stay. I thought you were going to miss it. that. I was going to tell I them to read it again. <laughs> I was going to say, that. you had to catch that first part. They got to go. We, ain't, we are not going to apologize for that either. You could call us a hate group, black separate, all these little labels, this popular persuasions they put out there. Right. It don't it change what is year. written here. Can you read it again? Can you read it again? So of thy Read it slow. Read, read it slow. Go ahead. So of thy people. So of thy people, Israel. Was accepted. Was what? Accepted. Go ahead. Both the salvation of the righteous. So not only did we accept the salvation of the righteous, we also did what? And destruction of the enemy. We also understood and accepted that our enemies must be destroyed in order for us to be delivered. That's right. And hey, you heard the video they said uh, when a nuclear bomb goes off, they said the uh, the den. What did they say? The the, no, they said the. I just said it to you. Remember, I said it. What's that thing when they go in the ground? The underground bunkers. The underground yes. bomb shelters are going to be melted. Yes. It's the, fall, the fallout shelters. Give me that in Revelation 6 where it says that. There is no shelter that could withstand the heat that's going to come. 14 okay. down. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 14 down. The book of Revelation. some of you talking about you're going to get on the plane and go back to Jamaica or Puerto Rico. You're going to get destroyed too. What? It's going to say that in this right here. Revelation what? chapter 6 verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll. That's that nuclear destruction. Go ahead. When it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The island's going to be moved. So you ain't going to be no place you can hide. I'm going to hide in Haiti. Haiti is going to be hell on fire. Go ahead. <laughs> and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's your underground bunkers that some of you, oh, I know well, uh, Schlitzelbling, he's going to let me go in the underground bunker with him. He ain't letting you in there anyway. He won't even let you in his neighborhood. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all laughing. Whoever saw that Twilight Zone episode where the one house on the block had a fallout shelter and they thought a nuclear 
war was going to happen. Twilight Zone is before a lot of y'all time, but there's an episode where only one house, they knew that that one house had a, a, a fallout shelter. You saw it, Cap? Okay, and they just showed you what happened just from panic. It, it turned out being a false alarm, but they tore that man's house up. Yes. Hey, <laughs> put that back, Abiel. On Coney Island Avenue in Brooklyn, go to Coney Island Avenue, they have these signs that say fallout shelter. They got the arrows. Guess what, black people? That ain't for you. That's for the so-called white man that claims right. to be Jewish. Right. They know where it is. I bet nobody know where them fallout shelters are. No. They got them all down there, big one. They got on some in Mount Island. Vernon. They got some in Mount Vernon. As a matter of fact, Professor X, the building that we were going to get, yeah. had a fallout shelter in it. Exactly. So read that again, Captain Isaac. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Thy kingdom come. That's what you want then, right? Thy king, this is it right here. Go ahead. And from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Nobody. So that's thy kingdom come. So you got Christians that say that Lord's Prayer and don't know what the hell they're saying. That's right. And You're talking about destruction. You talk about that Lord's Prayer. And they're trying to speak against the gospel, we're, the good news we're bringing. Right. The good news we're bringing is y'all don't have to die. There what they're go. telling you is you're going to survive. Okay, we're explaining to you that we see the destruction coming and there's a way for you to escape it. They're telling you ain't no destruction coming. That's how you're going to get rocked to sleep. Yep. Now, I want to ask you one more thing. Abiel, the video that you played of Putin speaking in the meeting, can you bring up the date that that meeting was for a minute? I want to know exactly when he was saying these things and when he was warning the people to know if these changes that I've just observed, not that one, the one where he was speaking in the meeting about... Um, the plans of America that y'all don't know about, and he was trying to explain to you, look, they're up to no good. You people don't know what they're doing, but we know what, what they're doing, and we are preparing for it. Because in the meeting, he was explaining to you how the missiles, when they reach the atmosphere, what they're going to do, and why it'll be hard to be able to stop them. Okay, did you find a date? Okay, he was explaining to you in detail. A lot of you are just blah, 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 blah. That's the way y'all was listening to him. But he was explaining to you what the missiles can do and how they work and how they operate, how you can make them, how you can activate the nuclear warhead, how you can deactivate the nuclear warhead. Case in point, there's a movie that I was watching with... Um, called Criminal. You ever saw that movie Criminal? Okay. In the movie Criminal, there was a spy that died, and he had information in his head that they wanted to get out, and Kevin Costner was a criminal inside of a prison. So they had to take someone with no emotions and no feelings to use him to hook up some new um, scientific thing to extract the information from this dead man's head and put it in his head. So they're showing you that they're going to any lengths to find out what was it that this spy that he died with this information in his head, and you don't realize until the middle of the in the middle of the movie why they were going so strength such lengths to pull somebody out of prison that that man that died had information that another spy had about detonating nuclear warheads. Okay, so in the movie, the guy had to prove that he had the power to detonate nuclear warheads. So you say, you know what? I'm going to override all your, your, your system defenses, and I'm going to launch one of your missiles. And in the movie, he targeted a submarine. He see, he see it on the screen, and then he clicks a button, and everybody's going crazy in the submarine. Who's doing this? What's going on? What's going on? And they shoot the missile in the air, and you see everybody on the submarine in shock. You know what he does? He turns off the nuclear warhead, and it just explodes like a regular bomb. That's what he was talking about there. When Putin was trying to explain, you can easily turn it off and on, off and on. He didn't want to kill nobody in the movie. He just wanted to show you. He just wanted to send you a message. 
Don't play with me. I have the power and I have the understanding to use your weapons against you. Now, did we get the date on when he... June of this year. Now, I want you to go on YouTube and I want you to type in Unstoppable Bomb. Full speech. I, I got it. I got Unstoppable Bomb. Now, what y'all missed that Putin was saying in the in that interview, Putin was saying, look, we know what America's doing. So we're working on technology that could bypass theirs. And they did it. They did it. Okay, I forgot the regular, that's the nickname for the bomb that they created. But they now created a missile. That's why he was so in detail on telling you what the bomb could do and it reached the atmosphere, how they could turn it off, turn it on. He's very well learned. He's very well knowledgeable of what these nuclear things could do. It's you who don't know nothing. There you go. Because they're busy running out behind the Olympics, yeah, Hillary yes, yes, Clinton. Yes. That's what's wrong. Then nobody's, what you're talking about, this is not even interesting to a lot exactly. of people. Exactly. It's like blah, blah, blah. Y'all want to know about the angels and Adam and what sandals Adam had on? Okay, did he have a jerry curl? What did he eat? That's where your mind is while the world is coming to the end. The point that I'm making is he's explaining to you in detail. He's explaining to a bunch of morons. That's the way he looks at the rest of the world. You're morons. He's explaining to you that the people who you trust in, the country who you trust, is about to burn you. Okay? And he's letting you know that I'm not stupid and I'm getting prepared for it. So this is what I'm designing. Let that play. My friends, this is the new unstoppable Russian ICBM. It can kill millions of people in one launch and is now the fear of the world. Yes, this is no joke. According to Sputnik News, the best current missile defense systems may prove powerless against the Sarmat. Yes, we've been reporting on this That's the massive name. new ballistic, it Satan intercontinental too, but it's ballistic called the missile. missile. Uh, it's, it is Russia's new intercontinental ballistic missile, which will be ready for field trials this summer, according to the Russian news network uh, Zvezda. Now, Russia's latest intercontinental ballistic missile, the Sarmat, may actually render, get this, may render all current missile defense systems obsolete. Yes, according to the Russian network, uh, they reported that the RS-28 Sarmat is the state-of-the-art heavy liquid-propelled intercontinental ballistic missile which is currently being developed for the Russian army. The missile may become the standard by which all missile defense systems are measured once, is it, once it's fully operational. Now, Zvezda said, in this sense, the Sarmat missile will determine in which direction nuclear deterrence in the world will develop. Pause it. Do you understand that? That's why I had to explain to you, that guy is not no punk that was talking. He's behind this because he sees what you don't see. He said the way this bomb was developed, the entire country is going to have to restructure their missiles to deal with this. And that's that thug that you saw riding around like you see motorcycle gangs in Harlem. He, that's just one. And like Deacon Ithan pointed out, I was looking for the other pictures that show you no matter where he goes, he got that briefcase with the launch codes right next to him at all times. Everywhere he goes, he has a laptop, he has a computer that if he decides the heat is on and he needs to blow stuff up, he can blow stuff up. Let it play. Deacon A said, I, I want to read what you what you got on the screen. Go ahead. Is there more to this? Yes, it's this, just a little bit the, more. This, right. this type of a claim. Now this is this is going to be the gold standard of ICBMs. That all the militaries of the world are gonna have to look at this this the spec sheet on this ICBM and say this is the ICBM that we need to defeat. And if we can defeat this one, we can defeat everything else underneath it because this is the most devastating, the most powerful ICBM ever developed. Now, the broadcaster added that the RS-28 is capable of wiping out parts of the Earth the size of Texas or France. Okay, that's one ICBM. One, one could do that. One. Not... Not, not, not multiple shots. Pause it. Pause okay. it. Because in the video that we showed RS before, RS twenty eight. In the video we showed before, if you listen to him, he gave you the ratio if if three hundred make their target. Okay, that's why I was explaining to you that was an older video. Now he's explaining to you if just one makes their target. Do you see how huge Texas is on the map? So you're talking about maybe five of those could destroy the entire United States of America. 
He was giving you statistics for 300. Let it play. Cape Sarmat is capable of wiping out parts of the earth the size of Texas or France. And that its higher speed performance, they say, will enable it to speed past every single missile defense system in existence. They write that it's a two-stage missile with an estimated operational range of 10,000 kilometers and a mass of at least 100 tons, including a payload weighing from four tons up to 10 tons, and it will be MERV equipped to strike 12 separate targets that will have an array of advanced anti-missile countermeasures meant specifically Positive so what they're saying there is that there's a, there's warheads connected to it that when it gets to a, right that when it gets over its target then it splits up and it starts hitting different points all at once. It also has missiles that can dodge other missiles as it hits its target. It can it's a smart missile basically. It can dodge other missiles <laughs> while it's being at, so while it's attacking, it's defending itself at the same time. That's right. And you notice they keep stressing the weight. Because, just like the bishop just pointed out, when the missiles hit the earth, they want to go deep inside and detonate. They already know that a lot of you think that you're going to be able to hide. Okay, so if you watch these nuclear blast movies, I forgot another one that I was watching. It says some of them are going to explode 1,300 feet into the earth, and then it's going to shoot down and spread and rip everything up. They already had weaponry like that when they tested those weapons in Iraq. In Iraq, yes. They had, they had in other words, they have bombs. That's what they call them, bunker busters. Bunker busters. When it goes in, drills a hole, the bomb drills a hole, then another bomb comes behind it, inside of it, and blow everything inside the bunker completely to smithereens. Okay, and in those bombs, <laughs> I y'all got to listen to him when he talks. Most of them are designed that when they hit, they remove the oxygen from the air. Because they want to make sure you don't have no energy to run. You can't breathe, you can't run. Okay, that's why they're calling this the Satan. This, the, the, the scriptures tell you where are they getting this understanding from. It's from the devil when you read in Revelation chapter 13. The devil is guiding their footsteps. We're not calling them the devil for nothing. Why would you make something like this and call it the devil? Okay, why well, you do that? <laughs> and and, and co-sign it by Satan. Okay, they're letting you know their mentality and what you're up against. And as I said before, some of y'all are moving like this is a joke. Can I, can I read something real quick? That's the waster. Right, right there. The, the, hey, exactly. Give me Isaiah 46 and 10 first. Because what y'all looking at on the screen, the most I had this thing re recorded in the Bible. Isaiah 46 and 10. Listen. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. The Most High declared all of what we're talking about now, what you see on the screen and all that. The Most High declared, declared means that he made it plain. He made it, he made a declaration that this was going to happen. He prophesied. He prophesied about it. Thank you. He prophesied about it in his Bible from the beginning. Go ahead. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. And from ancient times, in the ancient days, what did he do? The things that are not yet done. He prophesied about the things that are not yet done. One of the things that was not done in the beginning, but yet he prophesied about it, is about this meeting that you brought up in the video. Here you have leaders sitting down arguing over you trying to blow me up. Well, I got a bomb bigger than yours. Oh, that's, right. that's in the scriptures. Now let's read about it. Give me Isaiah. That's right. Isaiah 13. <laughs> Isaiah 13, 4 to 6. Wow. And y'all talking about this Bible ain't real. Yeah, what other book can do that? Exactly. Well, right. well, gonna, watch <laughs> this. Watch this. We're going we gonna to literally read what we just saw on the screen. Isaiah 13. Verse 4. Verse 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains. The noise of a multitude of, of nations in the governments. Go ahead. Like as of a great people. And a lot of, a lot of the people th th that's over these countries are sitting down in these meetings discussing this with their journalists and all of that. But the regular people know nothing. Go ahead. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations. The, a tumultuous noise meaning arguments, mad and angry, 
what you, you you lying to us you're not telling us the truth your weapons you said that you was building them for iran and 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 iraq and all that when they when they don't even have any weapons so you lied about that yep. meaning that you're really coming against us yep that's the arguments that's going on that's what we just saw yep as recent as two months ago right. god had it recorded in the bible read a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Most High is the one that's gathering these nations. He's making them fight. He's making them argue. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. God is the instigator in, this, in the pool of people arguing. God is the one that's causing them to argue. Let's see why. Come on. They come from a far country. These weapons. That's what we're looking at on the screen. Go ahead. They come from a what? A far country. The name of this thing is called the ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, meaning that it can go from continent to continent. That's what it's talking about, intercontinental, meaning it travels from one country, one continent to another. Read. From the end of heaven. From the other side of the earth. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation. That's God's weapon. God caused the smith to build this. Go ahead. To destroy the whole land. To destroy the whole what? The whole land. Is there an S on that? Well, nope. So that means the complete riddance of this great country that you love. The Most High is going to cause that and weapons like that to make a complete riddance of this place. So that's Revelation 18. Revelation 18. There you go. On fire. That's on what fire. That's, that's what it's talking about. That's this place. America. That's this one right here. Hey, um, can we read Jeremiah chapter 51? Because... Deacon Yawasop spoke about in Revelations chapter 7 that the angels already prepared for this and they're holding it back. They're holding destruction back. And you always hear them say, the bishop always puts emphasis on holding back the winds. The Bible describes what kind of winds the angels are holding back. Okay? Jeremiah 51 verse 1. Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me. A destroying wind. That's that nuclear wind when those bombs hit. God is the orchestrator of all this. There is nothing you can do to stop this. Okay? Because some of y'all be like, yo, they listen to our phones. They're probably watching our class. We don't give a damn. We don't care. We want them to listen. Like the bishop said, they could take everybody out here. It's still going down. And as long as we die in righteousness, we're coming right back. Read on. And we'll send unto Babylon fanners. That's your terrorists. That's your people that's monitoring the activities of the United States of America. And they're trying to proclaim us the terrorists. As I said before, these people will blow stuff up and call the authorities and say, yes, we did it. Al-Qaeda did it. Taliban did it. Hezbollah did it. ISIS did it. Okay, they'll call in that they did it because they want credit. Those are your fanners. Those are your terrorists. Read on. And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. They're all waiting for this to happen. You are the ones that are clueless to what's going on. They sending up prayers to their fake God waiting for this to pop off. So that day of trouble is the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation that all of y'all are not afraid of right now. In one hour, you're going to know that you're going to be that you're gonna die, and there's not going to be nothing you can do about it. That's why in the video, he gave you the, 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 the destruction in the space of an hour. He told you what's going to happen in one half hour, and he told you what's going to happen afterwards. He told you how many people are going to die. Read on. In 30 minutes. Most I said in an it, hour, the whole country yes. going to be gone. He said in 60 minutes, the Bible says in 60 minutes, there will be no more United States of America. In one hour, it says in Revelation, those bombs that we're talking about, it's going to wipe everything out. When you go outside, look around. You ain't going to see that no more. If you make it, you're going to be watching from the chariots. You're going to be watching a lake of fire. Right. A A7, in the video, I don't know if it's this one, but there's another video with Putin, and he says... We have a bombs that'll take America out in one hour. Yes. He it's literally one. says one yes, hour. Yes, yes. You're right. Keep reading right there for one second. Verse 3. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth himself up in his br brigandine. brigandine, and spare ye not her young men. Destroy ye utterly all her hosts. This is what God wants. Read on. 
Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken. That's what y'all need to understand now. That's why we're explaining this gospel to you this way. You're not forsaken. Do you understand there's people that are going to burn and there's nothing they could do about it? You have not been forsaken. That's why you have to see the seriousness of this gospel as things evolve. Read it again. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. And that's how they're trying to keep you now in sin. That's why they got the Black Lives Matter. That's why your president is leaving office and he's more worried about what bathroom you could go in than what's happening to you as a people. He ain't concerned with what's going to take place on this earth because this place is filled with sin. Read on. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. And he's talking spiritually because you have Israelite groups that read this and take it literally. And we already showed you ain't no place to run, ain't no place to hide. Read on. How you going to run from something that when it hit a thousandth of a second, the heat went miles. <laughs> With, you cut a second up in a thousand pieces. By the time that one increment of a second passed by, the heat, the heat wave have went hundreds of miles and again like the bishop pointed out he spoke about the isles being destroyed you i'm fleeing to israel israel gonna catch it too destruction is coming there you think they're gonna leave that out with the people that's there the head rulers of the country are there they catching it too you people that are running is because you don't believe you're going to be delivered read on flee out of the midst of babylon and deliver every man his soul be not cut off in her iniquity. That's how you escape the destruction. Right. Don't get caught up in the sin. Whoever cap you with or whoever you're following, there must be instructing you how to deliver your soul by not being caught up in iniquity. Read on. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render un unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. That made all the earth drunk. That's why you have your Black Lives Matter. That's why you have your Hillary. That's why you have your Trump. You drunk or foolishness. That's why you got the Olympics. Okay, they showed those them white boys that lied and said they got robbed. I don't care. Big, big thing in the news that they lied that the Brazilian police robbed. I don't care if they robbed them if they didn't rob them. Who cares? But that stuff is just a distraction from the real issue what we're talking about. Read on. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. They've lost their damn mind, except for Putin. Putin is his mind is right. His mind is right. He's walking around with the nuclear codes, and he's telling you what type of bombs he's building. Putin is on point. The most I said is he put it in the hearts of men to fulfill his will. So that's what Putin is doing. Putin cannot escape, or whoever it is. The Most High got people set up to execute what this Bible says, and then they're going to do it. Now, all that we just read was some heavy stuff, but I'm going to tell you out, everything we just read, as powerful as it was, and prophetic, verse 6, Captain Isaac, is what all of us should be meditating on. Verse 6, flee out of the midst of Babylon. That doesn't mean get on a plane. Watch what it means. And deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. Deliver your soul by not being cut off in her iniquity. Her iniquity includes pornography. Her iniquity includes uh, strip clubs. I'm just getting some base stuff. Adultery. Adultery. The stuff that they think is safe. The stuff that they think is safe. High. Homosexualism. Homosexuality. Some of y'all are, are battling with that. Okay, lying. The Bible said liars are going to get cut off. Why do you think you got some Israelite camps lying? Y'all going to be shocked that the ones you were listening to telling lies, they said, the scriptures say they're not entering the kingdom. That's Liars right. shall burn in the lake of fire, it says in Revelation. Exactly. Another iniquity is crack, cocaine, her, 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 her on, heroin. Heroin. <laughs> That's I'm on heroin. <laughs> some of y'all in here may be struggling with that, men and women. Excess, remember we talked about, we read earlier about excess of drunkenness, right, right. surfading. You're partying, you, you, your Thanksgiving holidays and all that. The, read verse 6 again, Captain Isaac. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Delivering your soul. Me, that also goes with not abusing your wife, 
I'm going to say that again. Don't be cut off of iniquity. Also includes abusing of your wife, women committing adultery, up and leaving their husband, getting pregnant, come back saying that this is your baby. These are the iniquities that America promotes. They say just use a condom, yep. meaning keep the adultery life going. Keep it secret. Keep it secret. What's that, that website where you could? Uh, Ashley Madison. Ashley Madison. Oh, I'm a dog on says, there. Life is short, have an affair. That's their slogan. Right. And okay. you got some of our people up in there. You got brothers on the, what's that, Mac, that newspaper they was picking up women? Holes? Back page. What is it? Back page. Back the website, page. backpage.com. Craigslist is another one. Read that again, Captain Isaac. I want you to meditate. All this whole thing we read is powerful, but verse 6 is where you better meditate on. Go ahead. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. Brothers, sisters, don't get cut off in her iniquities. Do not get cut off in Babylon's sins. Everybody, like we read earlier, everybody want to be like the Greeks. I want to be like the white man. Oh, you're going to get cut off in her iniquities. Go ahead. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Mm -hmm. He will render unto her a recompense. Meaning a judgment, a payback. Hello, I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.